in this session we would like to simplify some of the concepts behind planar kinetic equations of motion so let's first see a rigid body under general plane motion so here the black line indicates a body and if it is under general plane motion it will have translation and rotation so here we can see some external forces acting on the body from F1 to F5. So these forces, if they're unbalanced, it the body may have um, acceleration. And since the forces, if they cause a moment about any point on the body, or if there is a moment acting on the body, that may cause rotation. And then rotation involves ex angular acceleration and angular velocity. So one thing to understand that here in this dynamics course, we're going to limit the uh, rigid body, planar rigid body analysis, considering that the body, the black uh, line body here, is symmetric with respect to a fixed reference point, a fixed reference plane. Let's see what we mean by that. The limitation of this study is that we'll assume the body is symmetric about a plane x, y, and we may not always use this concept when we solve the problem, but we need to know that the application in future, that all the equation will be driving for this um, course is that, um, the equations we will be using is only valid for uh, a body that is uh, symmetrical on both sides of a plane x, y. So what we mean by that is if we assume the same body that we had on a previous slide and we took any point p, p is any point on the body and we use the p as a origin of x, y axis uh, and z is perpendicular on that point p here, uh, the we also assume that the xy plane uh, is not rotating; it's just translating with the body, uh, with the body, or fixed. So now, if we look from this side on a three D body, right? This body is a three D object. If we look on this side, and if we project that down here, so this will be my y axis and z axis that we cannot see here. So what we mean is that the body has to be symmetric. So this side has to be exactly mirror symmetric from the y-axis. That way, it is. if we look from this image, it has to be symmetric on both sides of the xy plane. Or in this image, symmetric ha have to be uh, on the both sides of y-axis. So why it is important? Well, in this way... A 3D problem becomes a 2D XY plane problem. So we can only worry about the XY plane because it's symmetric about the XY plane. So if my point is anywhere on the on one side of the XY plane, it's same as if it was in the other side of the plane. And it is useful because um, the most importantly, the rotation equation, you know, when for rotation, you need the moments. And um, so when you have the symmetry plane, the rotation equations become very simplified. So that's the limitation of us um, for this course uh, when we're doing the planar kinetic equation of motion for a rigid body. Another example of the symmetry would be um, if we take a top view, top view of um, a problem here, it's a different body. So our uh, symmetry plane would be x, y. So we're doing looking from the top plane. So y is here perpendicular from the from x, z plane. So we're looking at the x, z plane. So our x, y plane would be symmetrical. So the axis has to be the plane has to be in a such a way that the body it makes the body symmetric about that axis. We cannot take um, any axis other than this line because that will not make uh, symmetry about that axis it will be unsymmetric and we cannot use the concept that we're gonna derive 
uh, for this chapter. So now let's look at the equations. We're not going to derive them because those are given in already in the textbook. I'm going to simplify it um, with explanation. So since our body has uh, translation and rotation, so let's first start with the translation. And we studied in our previous chapter for a particle, F equals to MA equation of motion. When we had a system of particles, then we had a summation of all force equals to mass into uh, acceleration about the uh, mass center, G. So the weight would be downward from there. And um, the same thing here for this body, uh, we'll have the same equation when summation of all force only if, if they're unbalanced. If the summation of force are balanced, there will be no acceleration. This can, will become zero. But when they're not balanced, so we can, we'll have the same equation. And this will have two component because we're only considering X and Y plane. So planar motion, so X and Y plane, no Z. So we'll have a X component of the same equation and Y component of the same equation. So now we'll focus on the uh, motion of um, equation, equation of rotational motion. So when we talk about a rotation, we know it rotates about a fixed axis. So what will be the axis here? Since we're studying any point on the body B, and we're studying the XY plane, so the rotation will be on XY plane, but it has to be an axis, about an axis. So it is the Z axis perpendicular to XY plane and on its exactly on point P. So the rotation is about X axis at point P. So we were talking about all the external moment caused by all the external force about point P. So what if this point P becomes or we take the point P as at on the mass center G. So if this point becomes the same point as G, what will happen? So this will be the equation. We're again, we're not going to derive it. We're just going to explain it. The derivations are given in the book. And um, so what this equation means is that um, for, for P, when P becomes the point G, the sum of the moments of all the external forces ab about the body mass center G, so which is this one, Mg, which will be equal to the product of Ig and alpha. So what is Ig is the moment of inertia of the body about an axis passing through this G and the body's angular acceleration alpha. So in other words, if if our point of interest P becomes is the same is point of interest as mass center G, then our uh, rotational equation becomes very simplified. It just um, this equation. So what if our the point P here is not the same point as point G? P is a separ separate point, any point on the body, but but not the point or uh, mass center G. So what we'll have, uh, we have is the summation of all external moment about the point P. Not so MP will be equals to the kinetic moment of MAG, the acceleration AG. So acceleration of the body uh, at, at mass center G. And it will be X component and Y component. So we'll have two... Um, kinetic moments about point P because X bar and Y bar are the distance of point P uh, from point G and we already had the IG or we can also write IG alpha equals to IP alpha if P is a fixed point or the direction of acceleration of P is uh, on uh, on towards the point G the important things to notice, which uh, most likely that you guys are going to mess up, is the sign. You see the per, per Y, it is negative, and for M, A, G, Y, it's positive. And um, for X component, it's negative, and for Y component, it's positive, and uh, G, I, G, alpha is positive. So look at the diagram here. If is, this is my point and uh, this is point p so for a x component from point p the moment will create what a 
clockwise. That's why we have a negative here. The moment about this for this um, component m a g y and this is m a g x. Um, this will cause this rotation, which would be counterclockwise. So we have this as a positive. So moment from of g from this point will be counterclockwise positive and we assumed that the alpha right is this direction um counter so ig here counterclockwise so that's why we again put it positive if your problem has a clockwise angular uh, acceleration so this will be negative and if your point p is above here then thus this signs positive and negative positive can be different so in summary for planar kinetic equation of motion we have seen that for translation part we will have the fx and fy component uh, f equals to ma and for the rotation part we will have mg summation of all external moment will be about point G will be equals to the moment of mass moment of inertia about point G and angular acceleration of that body. Um, we can also write if if our point of interest is not point G in any other point, so we can have the same equation here for point P as a summation of all kinetic uh, moment, and this can be written for point P as a summation of these terms. So next we're gonna see um, the translation part and then uh, we'll cover the uh, rotation part and we'll solve problem and when we I we do the example problems uh, of these chapters then we're gonna analyze how and when to apply these equations till then thank you